Our church has been changed. We have been celebrating, as Nephon has wanted for some time, daily services the last few days, but not just the daily services of the church, but wonderful, triumphant, glorious, wonderful services to welcome the relic of St. John of St. Shanghai in San Francisco. And it is not simply um, a joy to us, but it is the opening of a portal into heaven, as every church should be and is. So in amplified measure, uh, God has visited us. It is something that we should always treasure for the fact that the uh, saint is with us. We also have Saint Theophil and other saints, Saint Dorothea. But Saint John is of our time. He died in 1966 and is uh, proven by the grace of God to be incorrupt. And so it is a particular sign for us and also and for us in, in uh, our church to remember and to watch over this grace and this, both the physical presence of the relic but also the grace that has come with it. Because as Father Dragan has said, uh, he knows personally of several hierarchs who have requested portions of the relics of St. John and not received. And to say nothing of priests and parishes around the world that have made requests honorable, fully orthodox, deserving parishes and have not received. And uh, thanks to the, the grace of Brother Deacon Michael's dream some time ago, he made bold to make the request. Uh, the request was honored by their bishops. Uh, Bishop Daniel visited the cathedral in San Francisco in uh, July when he was with the youth conference. and. Um, made arrangements, understood how to, who, to whom to write. Um, I wrote a letter, Father Michael and I collaborated. The Bishop Metropolitan Joseph uh, sent the, wrote the letter from that, based on those thoughts, sent the letter to Archbishop Kirill of uh, the Rokor Western Diocese, and uh, the request was granted and in fact uh, successfully completed. We had a glorious welcoming at the airport uh, with full cooperation from the airport authorities. Uh, we are uh, thankful to Mr. Carlo Bertolini and the staff there and uh, the officers and our TSA agent who accompanied uh, the, His Grace. So all of these things, these events I recount because we should all be aware of them. And as we, over time, the memory of these particular days and events fades, the relic will still be with us, St. John will still be with us, but it's good to have in our living memory how this came to be in our church. And we'll, we'll write up some of the account, but now you're present at the time when this took place and are particularly blessed with this living memory, which may it abide in you forever, uh, that this uh, St. John has come to be with us. We want to make him fully available and we'll see how that exactly gets done, but for today, he'll be out with his icon. Uh, then we'll work out some way of, of making him securely and freely accessible. Uh, so how do we respond to the presence of a saint? Well, first, why are we concerned about the, a particle of the body of a man? Uh, because the, this man has by the grace of God proven to be his incorruption, shows that he had won the, the battle. He had fought the good fight to its conclusion and had overcome the passions, had successfully dealt with this physical body and all these things that we experience, the, the trials and tribulations, the uh, joys and sorrows of being in the physical body. And we understand that this is not simply something we have, but something we are, body, soul, and spirit together, that we, uh, God has made us in his own image and likeness. And because of this uh, unfortunate choice that Adam made, we also are afflicted by this tendency to make poor choices or downright bad choices. And yet we have the possibility to make 
good choices by the grace of God. And we see in St. John, through his life and the witness of his incorruption, the, the evidence that he was making good choices. And so the fact that his relic is present with us is a grace of the uh, fulfillment of the promise of being a human being, that we can be with God. All those things that are talked about in the scriptures are actually possible. We can actually unite with him while still here in earth, in the body. And we have the proof in the incorrupt saints and all of those witnesses that God has given us in many ways. Uh, those who overcome fears, that overcome difficulties, uh, deformities, uh, bad circumstances, all the things that we might experience. Someone has also experienced and more and overcome those deficits or obstacles or, um, to make them stepping stones that they might become closer to God by dealing with those circumstances. And so how are we to approach this? The scripture says, with all lowliness, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another in love. And so we see in the life of St. John that this path is open to us and can be successfully walked. We can actually love even those who persecute us, who are uh, apparently our enemies. And certainly those who are kind to us, who love us, who are uh, good to us, both here in the church and in the world. And so the, the opportunity is present for us to give as we have received, that is freely. So how can this be? Because by nature, you might say, I'm not like that. I don't do those things naturally. Well, I don't know that anyone does. Sometimes there are people who are just outpouring uh, loving people. Uh, but all of us have challenges. And so we see in, again in the scriptures from Luke, the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. And so the, it's clear St. John did not make himself incorruptible. It wasn't his works that resulted in that in and of themselves. It's not a formula, it's not a technique, it's not something that you can make happen and you become humble and holy because of your will. That would be a contradiction. You'd be sitting there saying, look at me, how humble I am. My, uh, back in the, when my mom was alive, there was a, uh, he had some cards of little sayings on them. And, and one that I particularly love that I've mentioned before, humility prevents me from mentioning my many other virtues. Well, it doesn't work that way. That's not spiritual life. That's what we tend to do and say. But in fact, we are reaching for the heavens. We're reaching for the uh, ability to be draw close to God who is truly humble. And so in St. John, as we've heard through from the bishop and from the things we've read about his life, even early on, uh, although he was small of stature, quite small, uh, he was large in spirit, and this was acknowledged uh, from early on by those who knew him. So the presence of the relic is not simply something that conveys grace to us, that reminds us of heaven, that inspires us to reach higher, but also a reminder of how to um, approach God as his grace said, place your hope in the one who did this to St. John, that is, made him incorrupt. And so if our Lord is able to make a man incorrupt and preserve him in his body, as he has done with St. John and recently revealed to Father George Calci also has been shown to be incorrupt. And so this is uh, something that takes place in the church as a witness of God's presence in us and of the potential sanctity of the body as well as the soul and spirit. So all of these things are possible. And so whatever infirmities or difficulties we encounter, let us place our hope in the one who has made uh, St. John incorrupt and has uh, brought him to us for our inspiration and uh, consolation and our uh, abiding uh, 
the great abiding grace of which we may partake.